So I, I'm going to steal a phrase from uh, Bill Lagarkos, which is that uh, exercise is fasting and fast forward, uh, particularly when it comes to autophagy. And when you look at the data, both in humans and then in rodents, and, and the reason why you might look at rodents be is because if you're interested in autophagy outside of the muscle tissue, you know, in we might take humans, get them to exercise or fast, look at autophagy, we do a muscle biopsy. That's not too bad. Uh, but if you want to look at the liver or the brain or some other tissue, right, difficult to do in humans, but much easier to do in animals. So we kind of have to look at a bit of both. But when you look at the applied literature in humans, a 60 minute bout of low level intensity aerobic exercise, like 50 to 60% of VO2 max, upregulates autophagy as much as a 72 hour fast. Um, and they've even done studies where they have people fast for 36 hours before they do exercise, or they have them continuously fed during exercise. They give them a glucose infusion during exercise. And that fasting period before the exercise doesn't augment, doesn't increase the autophagy response to exercise. It's all driven by the exercise itself. And if you give people a glucose infusion while they're exercising, that also doesn't blunt it. So it's really the exercise that's driving that autophagy response rather than the, the nutrient availability, either fasting or fed. Before we get into the science, check out G-Sauce. There's a buy one, get one free link down below. This is literally the best sauce that I have found. So if you've ever had bitchin' sauce, it's from the people that originally brought you bitchin' sauce, except they branched off and created G-Sauce, so there's no seed oils, it's made with avocado oil, there's no garbanzo beans, it's not a hummus, it's a legit dip, something you can spread, something you can eat straight up. The ingredients, avocado oil, water, organic almonds, distilled vinegar, organic tomato paste, Bragg liquid aminos, cage-free egg yolk, nutritional yeast, lemon juice, you get the deal. It's clean, it's legit, and there's six different flavors. Like this one's Chipotle, which is my jam. There's Indian curry, there's Thai, there's all kinds of different flavors. Now they also have a sister company called Good Lovin' Bar, which is probably one of the cleanest keto bars that you're gonna find. So they've got a good track record. So anyway, that link is down below. Make sure you check them out and get your hands on that buy one, get one free for a variety pack of these six flavors. Uh, <coughs> <laughs> okay. Nice. That's really interesting. So does nutrient availability outside of an exercise state still influence autophagy as we've sort of suspected over the last few years though? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but you really have to think about the net energetics of the cell. So at rest, yes, nutrient availability does of course regulate autophagy because we know that sort of the, the major initiator of autophagy, ULK1, is um, activated or inhibited by mTOR or AMPK. So it's all about nutrient sensing. So yes, if you're in the fed state and you're rested, then you know you will inhibit autophagy and you can upregulate it with fasting and upregulating AMPK. However, if you're doing exercise, the sort of the net energetics of the cell are of course, you know, you're, you're creating an energy deficit or f energy flux through the cell. And then that's much greater than, than the general energy availability. So then that net effect is an overall in general, at least initially, activation of AMPK and activation of autophagy during exercise, regardless of the nutrient availability. That makes a ton of sense. And, you know, when it comes down to types of exercise, is there arguably a better type of exercise? I mean, aerobic exercise seems to be a big, powerful driver, but does it matter how much the body is moving? I mean, a body through space obviously moves a lot more than say, just sitting on a bike ergometer or something. Are there, are there specific kinds of exercise or resistance training or functional style training like CrossFit where you're kind of combining a lot of these? Is there any literature on that or do we just have to take a guess or? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, some people have looked at you know, relative intensities of aerobic exercise. And in that setting, you know, the, the more intense, uh, the greater the upregulation of autophagy. And again, if we think about this as a, like a, an energy sensing uh, system, then that makes sense, right? The, the, the greater you tax your muscles from an energetic standpoint, the, the greater the activation of these processes. But that's comparing 55% of VO2 max to 70% of VO2 max, that doesn't answer your like CrossFit, CrossFit or sprint training question. Um, they've done uh, studies where they had either people do sort of a steady state or add uh, intermittent high intensity sprints on top of the steady state. And adding the steady state didn't further increase autophagy, but it also didn't decrease it. So it seems like, you know, a, 
a prolonged ish period of something that looks relatively aerobic but at the higher intensity end seems to be where you get the greatest activation of autophagy from an exercise standpoint but that's with i don't think anybody's really looked at um you know resistance training or sort of just uh interval sprints however we do know separately that if you do say exhaustive uh resistance training like they have studies where you do like 10 sets of 10 to failure of leg extension, like something that sounds awful. Um, and you can get significant upregulation of AMPK by doing that. And I think, you know, by sort of, we can infer that you would be getting upregulation of autophagy, just they haven't measured, they just haven't measured it in that kind of setting, as far as I Interesting. I wonder if uh, at a certain rate, glycogen depletion also plays a role with that. You know, if someone is, especially when you're still kind of looking at that high volume kind of stuff, like that sounds like German volume training to me, which yeah, is utterly exactly. miserable. Yeah. Um, and, you know, a, a colleague and I, Matt, we were talking about this before this. And if we look at that, okay, if autophagy is induced by exercise, then in theory, when you are moving a muscle for resistance training with resistance training, and you have this localized activation, you know, this mTOR C1, are you potentially, if mTOR inhibits autophagy, are you in, inhibiting mTOR at a more in serious, excuse me, inhibiting autophagy at a muscle level when you are resistance training, albeit autophagy may still be occurring within different organs and mitochondria within different organs? Do you, interesting question, but I'm just curious on that if there's any idea whatsoever. Yeah, I think if we go back to that sort of similar scenario where you're doing very high intensity exhaustive resistance training um, as an example you get an early activation of ampk followed by a delayed activation of mTOR so i think that you may get some um, autophagy as an early response and and one of the reasons we undergo autophagy is because in the cell um, you're trying to access nutrients for energy metabolism um, and this is one of the reasons why we respond to an injury where you get reduced energy production with autophagy is because we're just like, we'll just start taking what we don't need because we need whatever we will take whatever we can get from an energetic standpoint to, to use as for energy metabolism. And so there's that early response. So I think you can still activate autophagy and then you get a later growth and repair response. So I don't think they're necessarily antagonistic. They just happen uh, differently in sort of in sort of timescales. No, that makes a lot of sense. That's really interesting to think about. And just, and you touched on this and there were little hints of it that I want to make sure that it's kind of coming to light more, uh, in an explained way with fasting for extended periods of time, say 24, 36, 48 hours after those longer fasts, then exercise seems to become a fasting accelerator, but not necessarily prior to that. Is that what you were alluding to? Uh, no, I or think the that, opposite. yeah, the opposite, the exercise okay. um, mimics fasting from an autophagy standpoint, at least, regardless of the of the context that you that you put it in. So if you take, you do exercise after an extended fast, or you do exercise when fed, you get the same autophagy response. So I think I think what I meant was, are you going to get additional benefit by fasting while exercising at that rate? And I think I think what you were saying before was something like the only time where exercise might add additional benefit with fasting is if it's a longer fast. So it's not necessarily the fast length doesn't necessarily matter as far as how exercise is going to impact it. Yeah. So, so I think there's, there's two important things that, that come out of that. Uh, when you look at um, fasting and I think the longest they've done is 36 hours fast, a 36 hour fast prior to exercise. So I, okay. so I, I don't think I can comment beyond that. But if you do 36 hours of fasting plus the exercise, that that period of fasting doesn't give you a bigger autophagy response when you exercise. Yeah. However, when we think about extended fasting in general, um, this is kind of separate but important. Um, with, with longer fasts, you start to get this picture of what we call, quote unquote, physiologic insulin resistance, which I hate as a, as a term. But... Uh, what it means is you're you're sort of changing how you'll then respond to certain nutrients in order to sort of prioritize where nutrients are going in the body while you're fasting. If at the end of that fast you then, ha you know, have a massive blowout, you're then going to have um, much larger responses, say, in blood sugar um, to that meal than you would have done if you hadn't fasted for several days beforehand, just because of the way the body is sort of prioritizing nutrient handling during the fast. 
However, you can offset some of that by exercising during fasting. So this is now separate from specifically autophagy. And now we're just talking about in general sort of cell level insulin sensitivity in the muscle tissue. But that makes, that the, makes sense, yeah. Yeah, there's some benefit. I think there's benefit from uh, moving or doing exercise during extended fasts, but it's not necessarily directly related to autophagy. It's, it's related to maybe some other processes, particularly what then might happen when, when you break that fast. 